the patient with amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, ALS. ALS appears to be increasing worldwide. The causes are not yet clear, yet some evidence suggests that the immune system may be involved. Excessive levels of glutamate can overstimulate motor neurons and cause them to die. And glutamate is one of the important transmitters for healthy brain function. And neurotransmitters are chemicals that transmit signals from one nerve to another. ALS risk factors may include hereditary. Up to 10% of people who have ALS inherited from their parents. If they have ALS, the children have a 50-50 chance of developing the disease. ALS is most commonly occurs in people between the ages of 40 and 60. Before the age of 65, more men than women develop ALS. The sex difference disappears after age 70. Geography. People living in Guam, West New Guinea, and parts of Japan have an increased risk of developing ALS. And dietary factors may be the cause. Military service. Recent studies indicate that people who have served in the military are at a higher risk for ALS. Once a motor neuron degenerates completely, the muscle that it controls no longer receives impulses from the brain. Approximately 60% of ALS patients experience muscle weakness and stiffness as the initial symptom. Usually the first muscles affected are those in the arms and legs. Walking or climbing stairs may be difficult. The patient may drop things, fall, experience muscle cramps, laugh or cry uncontrollably. The arms and legs may feel especially tired. If the hands are affected, the patient may have difficulty picking up small objects or turning keys. Speech problem like slurring, hoarseness, or decreased volume may also happen. As symptoms progressively worsen, the patient's muscles atrophy, causing spasticity, stiffness, abnormal movements, and alterations in gait and manual dexterity. Twitching may occur in the tongue and in affected limbs. The patient may experience muscle pain and muscle cramps, and some patients experience more difficulty swallowing saliva and liquids than solid food. Excessive salivation and difficulty swallowing may cause drooling. When respiratory muscles weaken, the patient may require a ventilator. ALS patients often experience fear, anxiety, and depression, and the disease frequently begins in the hands, feet, or limbs, and then spreads to other parts of the body. As the disease advances, the muscles become progressively weaker until they are paralyzed, and it eventually affects chewing, swallowing, speaking, and breathing. As the disease progresses, people with ALS will experience one or more of the following complications. Perhaps the most serious medical complication in ALS is the gradual deterioration of the muscles involved in breathing. The diaphragm and intercostal muscles weaken. The act of breathing, which is entirely autonomic for most people, becomes conscious and energy consuming. Many will use a non-invasive ventilation to compensate for weakening muscles by allowing air to move in and out of the lungs as if the muscles were working well. Usually there's one pressure for inhalation and another pressure for exhalation. This is called BiPAP for bi-level positive airway pressure and it's used as needed by people with ALS. It need not be used round the clock and pressures and mass and other aspects of the device can be changed as desired. Invasive ventilation is a more reliable means of delivering air to the lungs when the disease is advanced and the respiratory and throat muscles are almost entirely useless. A tracheostomy is a big step and carries added expense, specialized care by family members or hired professionals, a high risk of infection, and altered body image. Another complication is eating. Early solutions involve changing the consistency of food and fluids, usually thickening the liquids and avoiding large pieces of food, as well as changing swallowing techniques. Later, if swallowing becomes very hazardous, then a peg tube may be given. Even with the peg tube, the patient may still be able to swallow some foods or liquids safely. And we'll talk more about dementia later. Some ALS may need some pulmonary consultants and respiratory therapists to assist in breathing. Fewer than 5% of patients use long-term ventilation support. The non-invasive form of breathing assistance either a bi-level positive airway pressure BiPAP or a continuous positive airway pressure CPAP may be used to improve the patient's quality of life. Physical therapy is to maintain mobility and ease the discomfort of muscle stiffness, cramps, and fluid retention. Passive stretching helps to avoid permanent contraction of muscles. 
that may cause joint problems. Other therapies like occupational therapy use assisted devices like splints, corrective braces, grab bars, reach devices to help with daily activities with dressing, eating, toileting, and bathing. Other equipment like wheelchairs, electric beds, or mattresses can help maximize functional independence. Speech therapy and communication training is to maintain as many verbal communication skills as possible. Communication training also includes nonverbal technique. Because ALS affects the muscles used to speak, communication becomes an issue as the disease progresses. A speech therapist can help teach techniques that make the speech more clearly understood. Later in the disease, a speech therapist can recommend devices such as speech synthesizers and computers that may help communicate. A patient requires a diet of high energy foods that are easy to swallow and may benefit from a nutritionist. If the patient is not able to maintain adequate nutrition, a percutaneous endoscopic gastrostomy or feeding tube is usually inserted. This has been shown to prolong life in ALS patients who are losing weight. ALS is a disease that has no cure and no medical treatment beyond supportive care. The focus is on providing nursing care that helps a patient and family cope with ever-increasing disability and deteriorating breathing, maximizes communication, maintains comfort, and prevents further complications of immobility. Keep in mind that these patients are slowly losing their identity. They're losing their control over their own home, freedom to make choices, to come and go as they please, and their privacy, and all of this is lost to ALS. With ALS, once they adapt to the loss of one function, when they find they're yet losing another. Loss of physical abilities is only the tip of the iceberg. Instruct the patient to perform active exercises and range of motion to strengthen uninvolved muscles and prevent disuse atrophy. Utilize brace, splints, and canes to help keep the patient mobile as long as possible. Assist the patient to prevent complications that may result from symptoms to keep the suction apparatus at a bedside as aspiration is a constant danger. Instruct patients to drink and eat in an upright position with the neck flexed. Use a soft cervical collar if the patient has difficulty holding their head up. Give semi-soft foods and avoid easily aspirated parade foods and mucus producing foods like milk. Keep in mind that the patient may have frequent outbursts of laughing and crying. Develop a communication system when the speech is lost. Give the patient and family compassionate and caring support, which allows expressions of feelings and frustrations about losses and eventual outcome. Remember that the patient is alert and retains vision, ocular movement, intelligence, and consciousness even though they are paralyzed. And advise a patient's family on helping services such as the ALS Society of America. Discharge the home. When a patient receives the news that they have a fatal condition that will rob them of their mobility and independence is often nothing less than shocking. Newly diagnosed patients and families will likely experience a period of mourning and grief. Some people with ALS live much longer than the three to five years typically associated with this condition. Some live 10 years or longer. And keeping hope alive is vital for people with ALS. ALS does not typically affect the intellect or the spirit, and many people with ALS lead rich, rewarding lives. It is important to remember that the patient is more than just their diagnosis. It is only one part of their life, not their entire identity. Many find support in sharing concerns in the support group with others who have ALS. Family members and friends helping with care may also benefit from a support group of others who care for people with ALS. Planning for the future allows the patient to be in control of decisions about their life and their care. With the help of medical professionals, they can decide whether or not they want certain life-extending procedures and determine where they want to spend their final days. Talking about these issues isn't easy, but facing anxieties about the future may help them better enjoy life today.